So in this tutorial what we're going to do is we're just going to go through the basics of the Connect SDK. Now it's not going to be anything exciting, you're certainly not going to make Dance Central um, in this tutorial, but what we are going to do is that we're going to get the depth and the image data from the Connect itself onto your computer and then from there, well, the possibilities are endless. I know, don't get too excited though. First, what you've got to do is got to go to uh, connectforwindows.org and download the, the current beta, the, the one at the time of recording is beta 2. Um, but there might have been a newer one, and perhaps this stuff's completely irrelevant. But you never know. Uh, the future is a wonderful thing. But anyway, go on there, download it now. It's a big button, can't miss it. Right next to the massive connect is probably bigger than life size, but we'll ignore that. Um, something else you also need is a thing called Coding for Fun. Now that's on uh, Coding for Fun Coplex, um, and you just need to download that and save it somewhere useful um, for reference later. Because if you delete it, then your program's not going to work. Um, so you need to go download that and the SDK. Um, th both the links to do that are both in the thing down below, the information -y, description -y box of joy. Um, but we'll jump into the code and make something awesome. So this is our Visual C Sharp document. Um, it's literally just the thing Visual Studio gives you when you create a, a new C Sharp file. Um, all that we've changed is that the height to 480 and the width to 640. Um, that's just to get a vague dimension of what the, the video uh, and depth data that we're going to get from the Kinect um, to show it so it looks nice and doesn't look distorted, basically. Uh, now all this program is going to do, like I said, is just going to get the, the video and the depth data from the Kinect. It's gonna, not going to do anything more special, so don't expect it to. Um, but to do that, all we need to do is go to our toolbox, um, image, drag an image thing in, and then scale it to our window because that's pretty much all the program is going to do. So we might as well just make it the whole window, like a boss. Uh, now we need to name it something relevant, so go over here to Properties. Um, I'm going to call mine IMG Connect, because it's as good as name as any. Camel caps and everything, look at me. Right, so that's all we need to do for our XAML file. That's literally it. Uh, if we go back to our, our c sharp file, this is where the magic happens. Um, not, not particularly magic, but Cody magic. Um, this stuff you don't really need to know what it does, but you just want to append to this. Uh, but first, you, before you do that, you need to add to your references to your file. Uh, Right-click references in your Solution Explorer. Uh, Right-click add reference, and then you're going to need to find two files: the the SDK files um, and the Kony for Fun library files um, on your computer. Uh, the Connect SDK will be in the .NET tab up here. Just sort by um, letter, uh, it'd be called microsoft.research.connect, that one there. Uh, 0.45 I believe is beta 2, uh, the current one as of today. Um, if you've got anything that's less than 0.45 there, um, it's an old one and it really won't work, um, so don't bother. Um, the coding for fun, you're going to have to browse for to wherever you saved it on your computer, hopefully somewhere relevant. Um, my one's recently been used, so we might as well go there. Uh, it looks like this, codingforfun.connect.wpf, um, version 1, it's literally it. Yeah. Now I've imported that, and uh, so I won't do it again, otherwise it'll give me some horrific errors. So I'll just go to my using statements. Now this is just the, the bit where you tell your program where the, the libraries are, so it knows where to go to use them. So first off, we're going to go with the Microsoft dot research dot connect. Um, we're only going to use the NUI, so we're going to import that. Uh, notice it's exactly the same as when you added it in the reference, so it won't be a million miles away to know what's coming up next. Coding for fun dot connect dot WPF. We're using WPF because we're using Windows Presentation Foundation in this example. But there is a WinForms one as well, uh, but don't ask me about that because I don't know. Right, so now we've got all that stuff built up. What we're going to have to do now is create our own little runtime. Now it's as simple as going runtime and then our variable name, runtime newy. Uh, new is a, an obvious name, obviously, because it's an actual user interface that we're going to make eventually, but whatever. It's a nice name. You can call it whatever you like. Um, but now, what we need to do is to get stuff from the Connect. Um, and to do that, we're going to need to create our own function. Now we're creating a function rather than just writing it 
in the main window there is so that because in beta 2 um, we are allowed to use multiple uh, connects to get information from multiple connects into our program. So then we can use like 3D mod modeling, that sort of thing. <clears throat> so um, we're making a, a function to make that a bit easier in the future, but right now um, it's easier to make it in a function just in case the connects are plugged or unplugged, um, and then you can handle that better um, in the future. So now we've made a function, we need to put it in, in here, so it's make sure it's run. So setup connect here, there we go. And now this is where the proper magic happens, honest. So now, um, first off, we want to make sure that it doesn't panic and go crazy when there's no connect attached, because it doesn't look good. Um, and you might have forgotten to plug in your connect, and you might be going, why you no work? But really, it's a simple case of adding an if statement right at the start of this function. Now we're going to do uh, reference the runtime here. So runtime dot connects dot count literally just keeps a count of how many connects there are. So if there's no connects, we're going to display to the user something that, about reminding them to connect a connect. Um, this dot title is always a good one. So um, no connect detected will then appear at the top of the window um, of your program. But let's assume that your, your user has a brain cell and has actually remembered to plug in their connect before they start running your program. Um, what should we do then? So then we need to uh, make sure our NUI um, knows what connect to use. Uh, so NUI equals runtime dot connects. Um, and then we've got the first connect of that uh, with the index of zero. Um, if you've got any experience with arrays, which I hope you will, um, you'll know that's the first one in the array. <clears throat> so now um, we've got that, we just need to initialize the connection between the connect and your computer box. So nui.initialize. Magic. Um, this is basically just, uh, like I said, just creating a sort of gateway, uh, the pathway to your computer from the connect. Um, but it, first of all, to make sure it knows what to give you, you need to tell it. Um, we're going to use the image data and the depth data. So we're going to use runtime options dot use color. And also we want the depth data pass as well. So we're going to use these little line pipe operatory things to do that as well. So include uh, runtime options dot get depth as well. Use depth. So um, use depth and player index. We'll get the, the depth data as well as the index of the players. It can track two players, I believe. Uh, skeletal tracking will get skeletal tracking, obviously. Um, but we don't need either of those, so we're just going to use plain old boring use depth. Now, um, to make sure that we're getting something every time there's something available, um, we're going to create an event listener to listen for that information. So nui.videoframeready is our event. Now, a little bit of magic in part of, of C Sharp Express here. So if you do plus equals tab and then tab again, um, creates these this function for us and we don't have to type all this gobbledygook out ourselves. It's wonderful. So now every time there's a video frame, it's going to run this. But before we, we code that, um, we're just going to make sure that we open our video frame, our video feed, shall I say. So this is where it gets a bit tricky. So listen up. Make sure you copy it down exactly as I write it, and I'm not even kidding this time. Right, um, so um, nui dot video stream dot open, and then we open up this. Whew, there's a lot of stuff now. Um, image stream type is basically this is the type of the image stream we're going to get. So image stream type dot video rocket science. Um, this bit, pool size, this is the pool size of this. Um, if you don't know what that means, I don't either, but it's two. Uh, image resolution. Now, this is the image resolution we want from this, so we're going to have to get image resolution dot resolution 640 by 480 because that's the size that we made and it makes sense. And then image type, uh, image type dot color. And that's it. That's all we need there. 
um, but when we've opened the video stream we're getting the image data but we're not actually doing anything with it yet so this is what this does here and it's a simple case of referencing our image in the XAML file so img connect dot source giving it the source of the image now this is where the coding for fun becomes extremely useful um, image dot source equals e dot image frame so the, the source the image frame from what sent it um, and then we're going to convert it to bitmap source there and then that's a little function so we'll do that and then if I hit run and it'll build our project this is where the moment of truth to see whether I've forgotten something oh. so it's loaded our thing it's opening the window and it'll always be slow the first time because you've um, you're initializing the whole thing first um, and it's going a bit a bit slow but there I am look that's the image from the connect uh, and this is me hello um, but I did promise you something a bit more exciting, um, that depth data, so I might as well show you how to do that. It's really not a million miles away from this, um, but so I'll just copy this information um, here. But instead of video, we want depth frame ready. Let's just comment that out, because we're going to use the same uh, image on the main window.xaml. Uh, depth frame ready, so then we're going to run our function called depth frame ready. It's going to have squiggly land underneath it because we um, haven't finished there yet. Um, the same thing goes here. Um, depth stream open. And then image type dot depth. Um, image resolution, I don't believe, is 640 by 480. Um, but it will still work. Um, and then here, image type is depth. And so all we really need to do is make another one of these and call it depth frame ready. Run our thing again. And now we've got our depth image. That's me from before, just with our depth image. Um, white is things that it can't detect because that's too close to it. But then the further away we get, the darker it gets, and that's the, the further away stuff. Um, you might notice I have a few too many fingers uh, because it doesn't like shadows but really that's basically connect SDK 101 for you um, later on we'll get into more technical things like um, tracking hands etc but right now this is all that you need to know um, and I hope that it, you will find this a bit useful I suppose um, stay tuned uh, Moto will, is using all this tech itself and, and when something new and exciting comes out, I'll tell you how to make it yourself. So that's wonderful as well. Uh, but right now, you've got the basics. Go and make something cool, honestly. Um, I'll see you guys around. Cheers.